This year marks the 25th anniversary of our partnership with the NAE to establish the Draper Prize. The prize was founded as a way to honor Doc's remarkable legacy. He was undeniably a world leader in guidance and navigation, and his innovations transformed the 20th century. His accomplishments would almost certainly have qualified him for the NAE honor that now bears his name. In addition to being an engineer who loved to be in the lab, Doc was a great educator who trained generations of students in aerospace engineering at MIT. Engineers seek to impact society, but they don't necessarily seek fame and fortune. More often than not, a technology's true impact on society is not understood until decades after the development when it is taken for granted as part of our daily routine. Doc understood that long-term impact is a true measure of engineering success. I predict that inertial principles will be used in all the guidance systems of the future. The details will be changed, many improvements will occur, but the inertial principles will be always with us. By awarding the Draper Prize to engineers who have demonstrated a similar level of accomplishment and innovation in their own respective fields, we seek to publicly recognize those who have impacted daily life and significantly improved the well-being and freedom of humanity. The 2013 Charles Stark Draper Prize is awarded to Martin Cooper, Joel Engel, Richard Frank Hill, Thomas Haug, and Yoshihisha Akumara for their pioneering contributions to the world's first cellular telephone networks, systems, and standards. The cell phone is an exceptional technological achievement that has enabled us to communicate from virtually any location and access a myriad of information at the touch of a button. It connects people, provides security, and bridges information gaps in modern society. Each of these recipients made substantial contributions to its creation. Joe Engel and Richard Frankiel with the late Phil Porter were the earliest engineers to develop the plan for a network of low power transmitters and receivers spread throughout a region that came to be called cells. This allowed service to be expanded to millions of users with a limited number of channels, resulting in a design that would become the first cellular telephone system in the U.S. Shortly after the cellular network was developed, Martin Cooper unveiled the first portable handheld cellular phone while working at Motorola. In 1973, Cooper made the first mobile telephone call on his cell phone prototype from a New York City street to Engel, who was on a landline phone at Bell Labs. During that same time, at Nippon Telegraph and Telephone Research Laboratories, Yoshihisha Akumara was laying the groundwork for a network system that enabled simultaneous cell phone use by the masses in Japan. Akumaro's work provided the foundation for a mobile model that could be used over wide areas, including cities, hills, and mountains. Throughout the 1970s, Thomas Haug worked to develop the Nordic Mobile Telephony System, which provided analog service across Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden. Inspired by its success, in 1982, Haug formed a research group to create a system that would allow users to place and receive calls anywhere in the world. By 1992, Haug and his colleagues had successfully developed the first digital, high-quality, high-security mobile communications system called Global System for Mobile Communications, which gave users the ability to roam freely between countries throughout the Nordic region. So we thank you, Martin Cooper, Joel Engel, Richard Frankiel, Thomas Haug, and Yoshihisha Akumara for facilitating global communications with your technology. Tonight's award provides you with deserving recognition for your work.